July 10, Adam Voss. Your job may not make you famous, but in kingdom currency, it's pure gold. Adam Voss is a Christian and a barber, but sometimes he doubts that his life makes a difference for the kingdom of God. Seeing his gregarious, scripture-memorizing wife lead events for women, Adam wonders why he can't be more like the Matt Chandlers of the world. He doesn't preach or lead worship service or write books. He thinks he isn't anything special as a husband. Why has God left him out of the gift distribution? Here's what happened on one of Adam's days off. Daisy and Russ have been married now for 61 years. And up until the last couple of years, for 10 years, they had their special Taco Bell breakfast and then stopped in Adam's barbershop for their haircuts. Adam was their guy. But now Daisy and Russ were both in a nursing home and in separate wings. No room available for the couple to be together. Adam still went to the nursing home and cut their hair. Regular barbering for Russ and a buzz cut for Daisy for under her wig. But this one time, Adam asked his wife, Casey, who was a hairstylist, to go with him and make the haircut special for Daisy. When Adam and Casey checked in at the nursing home, the people at the front desk seemed annoyed. We have a stylist on staff here. Do they know that? Adam said, yeah, but I'm Russ's guy. By the time Adam and Casey got into Daisy's room, she was fumbling with her flip phone and afraid they had forgotten. Adam assured her that they had arrived at nine like he'd promised, but security took longer than expected. Daisy was eager to lead them to the other wing where Russ lived. Though Adam helped with the wheelchair, Daisy shuffled her feet down the long halls, her wig tilted and little hair sneaking out from under. When they finally got to Russ's room, he was yelling into his flip phone as he was hard of hearing. And when he saw Adam, his eyes sparkled. He hollered, I gotta go. My Adam just got here. Adam helped Russ into a more suitable chair, and they talked while Adam cut Russ's hair. In a near alcove, Casey cut Daisy's hair too. But every few minutes, Daisy shuffle rolled into Russ's tiny space to remind Adam not to forget to trim Russ's beard or to flirt with Russ, saying things like, now that looks like my guy. Russ and Daisy shared many stories with Casey and Adam that day but they all seemed to be about the couple's love for one another. As Adam and Casey were packing up to leave, Daisy rolled in with her checkbook. How much do we owe you for coming here? Adam shook his head. Nothing. What? Came the screechy voice. No, I gotta pay you. You came all the way out here. Casey said, the problem is, Daisy, we don't take money on Wednesdays. We didn't have anything to do today, so it was our pleasure. Daisy wheeled back into Russ's room and said, They won't let us pay them, honey. Russ said, We'll pay the man. Daisy's voice rose, No, they don't want our money. Russ reached for his wallet and yelled, You don't have any money? She wheeled closer and waved her checkbook. They don't want any. Now Russ was certain he understood. Okay, write them a check. Adam and Casey walked out quietly through the long halls, and Adam reached for Casey's hand. When they finally made it to the front, Adam asked the woman at the front desk, what do you have to do to ensure we can have a joint suite around here? Casey grinned and told Adam, I'm glad you're my guy. Colossians 3.23 says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as though you were working for the Lord and not for people. Your life can make a difference when you believe it can. Make a decision and act on it. Your job may not make you famous, but in kingdom currency, it's pure gold. Well, good day, 365 Christian Man. My name is Russell, and it is July 10th. And I come to you today from the great state of Minnesota, why I'm on vacation. And we just listened to a message of from Adam Voss. And as always, I kind of try to pick something out uh, that resonates with me. And today it was ordinary. Um, you know, ordinary guy, just him and his wife going to an old folks home, cutting some hair, got a little pushback, but, but leaned in uh, in its simplest form to people that 
just as, that he knew. And, you know, as, as we go through our day, men, um, what if we did this? And say, you know what, I'm gonna lean into somebody today. I'm going to serve somebody today. Um, maybe at its simplest level, who knows what that is. And for him, it was cutting hair. So, you know, as, you, as, you go through our, as we go through our day today, what if we just did this? Say, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find somebody I'm gonna serve today. Uh, and Jesus said over and over in scripture, uh, he came here to serve and not be served. And I think if we went through the day today and thought about that, uh, I'm gonna serve somebody uh, without looking for any type of reward at all, uh, just to be a good man uh, at a servant heart level. Um, my guess is that's gonna probably serve all of us well. I think it's a great reminder. You know, Jesus continues to remind us in scripture that that's the right thing to do. So the challenge for today uh, is let's get out. At the simplest level as ordinary men, let's serve and not be served. And uh, I can assure you that will have huge impact and influence on somebody's life as we go through our day. Have a wonderful day. Bless you.